you said after you, you traveled around to some of the groups with us that you went into kind of a, was it like a dark phase? Uh, yeah, but I don't know what you'd call it, but it the, the, the point of fear. And I found myself spinning down what seemed like the inside of a cone. And when I hit bottom, I knew in the back of my mind that I needed to go straight through that. And I didn't. You know, I put the brakes on. But no, no, I don't want to go there, I don't want to go there. And when I came out of that, all I realized was, um, I asked myself, what was I hanging on to? Why didn't I go through that? There is only love through there. It's only a letting go of, the, of thoughts of my mind. And just hanging on to the ego. And the absolute terror of um, literally letting go of the ego and thinking you're losing everything that uh, you think we know, that I know in this world, because I've made it, and obviously I value it. And I was just terrified of letting that go. So I needed to go over to the States and uh, have David and the messengers show me how to go straight through that. And that actually happened through a movie uh, called the, the, the Peaceful Warrior. And at the point where he let his ego that go when he was sitting on the ledge uh, high up on a church tower and he literally found himself talking to himself and his ego was saying to him, look, you can't do this without me, look, look what I've done for you all through your life, blah, 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 I'm here for you. And uh, he had realized at that time that he did not want his ego it, and he just gave him a push and he could see him falling down to the, uh, down to the ground. And that was the point at which I went straight through that. That brought me back to that point of fear. And after that it was gone. Not that the ego isn't still there. But right, it seems to be, rather than it having control of me, I have control over it. It, it hasn't got the grip on me that it, that it used to have. But the, the fear of letting that go is incredible. I, I literally never knew um, yeah, what fear was until that particular moment. Yeah, and I think what's so beautiful too is just the willingness that you had. Because I remember um, I was talking to Jason and he said, you know, Rob keeps coming, Rob from Australia just keeps coming to mind over and over and over. And he said, I, if you want to sit with me and call Rob, I think I should call Rob. And I said, yeah, let's call Rob. We called him on Skype, and then just with that little willingness, Rob just poured out exactly what he just shared, you know, with the fear that he was having. I mean, that's that no private thoughts thing, just the willingness to open up, you know, just, just the willingness to open up is the willingness to say, I'm not going to protect or hide. Uh, it's like a burp that's got to come up, <laughs> some gas has got to come up. It's like, no, I'm going to burp. I don't really care how it sounds or how it looks. I don't, I'm not concerned about being embarrassed or whatever. I'm going to burp. And then also that willingness to join. I remember we all got on the Skype call and it was real quick and I think Jason just said, I, I think you should be here. I think you should come. Mm -hmm. And it, Rob said, oh, okay then. <laughs> and uh, it was very quick as far as arranging a ticket and everything. And, uh, oh, yeah. It was just everything clicked into place. And then, you know, people just represent your own willingness. So when he came over, he was so willing and uh, he shed a few pounds. <laughs> uh, Jason had him working <laughs> in the woods <laughs> like a lumberjack. <laughs> but Jason was down there with you a lot of the time too, side by side, working side by side, talking. You know, a lot of people have this thing about spirituality, they think, I'll just go over and there'll be like choirs of angels singing and I'll just walk there and there'll be home, home, <laughs> the cats will be going home. <laughs> uh, but people have all kinds of ideas and, and it's never what you expect. Uh, you just never know what you're going to get. But uh, Rob came over with such, such willingness. And uh, just actually, it was an, in an indication to me also of a singular mind because it was right at that point of fear that I'd been through. And it was only two or three days after that that I got this email from Jason very quietly saying, Just wondering what you're doing. 
what's going through your mind. We have a couple of projects over here that you think you might be interested in joining. So, so we, we are not separate. It seems too like the ego can make the spiritual journey into a struggle. It loves to make the spiritual journey into a struggle. It likes to make the idea of the spiritual journey very, very difficult, so that you'll cave in and throw in the towel and give up when the going gets rough. Um, the ego even likes the idea of return to God. I was reading the Course one day and I went, wow! The ego even likes the idea of return to God, so it can make the journey difficult. <laughs> Enlightenment is not a change at all, simply a recognition. We talked about a little tweak in the mind, that's pretty simple, to recognize. You don't have to make enlightenment or salvation happen, it's just that little tweak of willingness to open to it. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. <coughs> you don't even have to be concerned about return to God, to return to where you already are. <laughs> Jesus says, this is a journey without distance to a goal that has never changed. Ooh. Great, great lines. He talks about the holy instant. Mm, everyone's heard about the power of now. The, all the spiritual traditions talk about the present moment, the glory of the present moment, the gateway to eternity. Jesus calls it the holy instant. And then he has a beautiful line. He says, you cannot prepare for the holy instant without placing it in the future. Wow. I read that one, I was like, whoa, you cannot prepare for I said, okay, what else do you have to say? <laughs> he said, you can bring it into your awareness by desiring it. Ooh, desiring it. Sounds a little bit like, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind. Just focus. That's how you return to the kingdom of heaven, is by desiring it. It's so cool that it's so simple that in my sense, my desiring it, I, I seem to draw all these beautiful witnesses, all these smiles and hugs. We were talking about hugs, what a joy it is to go give a hug. What a job! <laughs> Going around, you get off the plane, you get to give hugs, they take you to a place, they say, you're staying here, and you give hugs. Oh, and these will be your hosts, and you get to give hugs. And then the time comes for the gathering, and the people come in, and you get to stand at the doorway and give hugs, and give hugs, smile. What a, what a gift to be able to give the joy away, you know, just pour through you, just pour through. Everyone knows how good it feels to give a hug and to receive one. And it's funny, all the different things that, that, that can preoccupy the mind in place of giving hugs. <laughs> It's never what you expect. Uh, you just never know what you're going to get. But uh, Rao came over with such, such willingness and uh, just... Actually it was an, in an indication to me also of a singular mind. Because it was right at that point of fear that I'd been through. And it was only two or three days after that that I got this email from Jason. Very quietly saying, just wondering what you're doing. What's going through your mind? We have a couple of projects over here that you think you might be interested in joining. So.